When we talk about innovation, we're talking about two related issues. Firstly, we're talking about a new combination of existing ideas, competences and resources. So for argument's sake, Facebook wasn't new. Facebook had predecessors in MySpace and a whole range of earlier social networking technologies that ultimately allowed Mark Zuckerberg and friends to create a new social networking platform. Now, this is what makes Facebook innovative. And that's the second part of our definition of innovation. Innovation results in a transformation of the social and cultural or economic system. So we know about the impact that Facebook has had right across the globe and how it has changed the way we communicate. It has changed our sense of space and time. It's, it's changed the ways in which we talk to people, right, either through text or through video or still imaging. So innovation is a combination of existing ideas and existing technologies that results in a new way of doing things a new way of communicating in the case of Facebook and many of the technologies that we're talking about, of course, in relation to multi-platform journalism. Now, we can see here the extent of innovation in some of the biggest and most well-known new businesses, new technology platforms, um, in the past 10 to 15, even now 20 years. So you may have seen a graphic like this before, talking about how companies like Uber, Facebook, Net Netflix have disrupted ways of doing business, traditional ways of doing business through the use of technology. So again, the technology is not new and what the industry is, is not new. So if we take Uber for argument's sake, cars have existed for a long time. Taxis have existed for a long time, but rather the idea of using essentially a social media platform to allow everyday people to operate as taxi drivers transforms the transportation industry turns it on its head and to the extent where at least in the case of queensland the you know the laws the state laws couldn't keep up with it and for a while uber was operating illegally so why do we innovate of course technologies platforms allow and enable us to do the same thing in different ways. So for argument's sake, we can now watch television on our mobile phone, on our computer, on our, on our tablet device. But audiences play a role as well. So audience demands, changing audience tastes lead to media organisations to innovate. The ability to talk back to journalists is an important innovation in relation to the way in which the news media and its audiences um, interact with each other. Of course, the move to online news, online the, the online presentation of information turns economic and business models on its head. And of course, on their heads, sorry. And of course, these are probably the two biggest issues and challenges facing the news media industry um, right now and into the future. We as content producers are actually pretty good at innovating in terms of content creation. Journalists are creative people. Journalists are experimenting with new ways of doing things um, regularly. The problem is we don't know how to make money from it yet. And the economic and business processes that are required to adapt to new content platforms is something that the industry is really playing catch up on. And 
over the course of the semester in, in computational journalism, you'll discuss these issues in class. We can talk about two types of innovation or two differing types of innovation. So on one hand, we can talk about incremental innovation. And the example here is online news. So over time, news that was once in a newspaper, in a magazine, on television, has increasingly morphed into something that we now call on online news. I mean, 20 years ago, most online news was simply a reproduction of a newspaper article on the internet. And now we know it's something quite different. So that process has taken a considerable amount of time. So we can refer to it as incremental innovation. We can also speak of radical innovation, innovations which seem, and it's not always the case, but at least they seem to have happened almost instantaneously and have really radically changed the way we communicate. So for argument's sake, Twitter is an example of a, quite a radical innovation, I think, in terms of, in terms of how we communicate. Um, Previously, it was limited to 140 characters. Um, now we're up to 280. Um, and we know, thanks to Donald Trump, um, the impact and the influence that Twitter has had in relation to how politics is now conducted. Another example of radical innovation, and I think it's a really interesting one because it has I think in so many ways changed, changed how we communicate is the meme. The meme is, is, a, new form of, is a new form of communication. It's, it's kind of like the political cartoon of the newspaper or the magazine in, in some ways, but it also does things differently. It requires, I think, a different type of knowledge to understand the jokes that are in a meme. So we could think about memes as, as an example of radical innovation also. And to wrap up, I just wanna make the distinction between innovation and invention. So, in event, so invention, sorry, is the technology. So the example I've used here is the Wi-Fi signal. So it's the ability to transmit data through the airwaves. Innovation is what we do with it. Innovation is what we do with that data. So it is a platform like Facebook or it's a platform like Instagram. So that's an important distinction. Innovation involves not only technology, but what we do as a society and as a culture with that technology. So it's about technology allowing us to do things in different ways, as opposed to the invention, which is really just kind of the nuts and bolts, the mechanics of fueling and driving those, those innovations.